It's Talk Funny, a podcast by Mark Bailey and other comics from all over, but they still haven't paid their jingle girl, me. It's the 200th episode of Talk Funny. Congratulations to Mark Bailey and Nagoya Comedy and the other co-hosts on the show. Can I get paid now, guys? Seriously, nice podcast you have going here. It sure would be a shame if something happened to it. Pay me. Pay me. Pay me. The Talk Funny Podcast from NagoyaRadio.com and Nagoya Comedy. Here's Mark Daly. Mark Daly and Mike Miller back to Talk Funny. Hi. So, Mike, we were actually inside baseball. We were eating Kit Kats during the break. And I had a story I was telling one of the bar hostesses, and I had a point to the story. The point to the story is if I bring something up, I know how it ends. I actually know the facts of my story, which is why... I brought it up because I actually looked them up before, or I knew them. That's shocking. We were eating Kit Kats, her and I, and I said, you know, some people, they'll just doubt you if you bring something up. Well, I thought it was that. No, I said it was from here. I was mentioning Dennis, and I said, uh, Dennis, the program director, we had an argument about Kit Kats, and he <laughs> he said, as you do, as you do. As you radio. do, that's normal. Radio. It's completely normal. In radio, yeah. it's completely normal. Try not to talk about Kit Kats in radio. What are you going to talk about? Music? Arrangements? No, no, no. Writings? No, royalties? No, no, forget it. Salaries? No. No, Kit Kats. Dennis said, well, you know, in England we have more Kit Kats because Kit Kats are from England. <laughs> I said, they're not made by a British company. They're not made in England. No. They're made by Nestle, which also makes uh, Reese's, uh, Hershey, mm-hmm. uh, Mars Bars. They're made by Nestle in Switzerland. Mm-hmm. I mean, Switzerland is the head office. That's that's the company. And as I said that, then she interrupted my point, mm-hmm. and she said, no, but they're made in Japan. I said, no. Did you hear when I said Switzerland? That's a country that's not Japan. It's a Swiss company. She said, no, it's a Japanese company. It's, it's a Swiss company. Mm-hmm. I said, did you not get the point about when I tell a story, I know how it ends? <laughs> Apparently, I don't. No. She goes, well, I'll have to look it up. And I said... Here's the point. If you're going to argue with someone, why don't you look it up first and then argue. If you're wrong, shut the hell up. Mm -hmm. If you're right, push your point. Mm -hmm. I stopped meeting my in-laws, my wife's Mm -hmm. family. Every time we'd have a picnic or something up in Gifu, and they'd they'd always bring up, why is uh, the U.S. trying to force apples on Japan? I said, (laughs) apples, we have apples. And I said, well, we have cars in the U.S., but you're pushing cars. Yeah, but apples are important to us. Well, cars are important to Americans, yeah. more so than in Japan. And then, well, what about rice? You know, we have a special taste for our rice. I'm like, let me guess, you'd like your rice to taste more subsidized? Is that what you like? <laughs> is that is, umami? Is? Umami, umami, umami yeah. means subsidized? No, but rice is important to us. And I said, well, cars are important to us. And it's like, you know, we can't actually physically eat rice in other countries. And I said, Kind of weird how for four years your soldiers did fine in Asia. <laughs> they, were you importing Japanese rice? I don't think so. But you don't understand. Japan is important to our country. Yeah, most countries, their own country is important <laughs> to their country. What is it? Uh, Paul, Pat Paulson, comedian who used to run right, for president. Right, 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 right. He had a great line and he said, What makes this country so great is this land of ours. <laughs> yeah. And if I could think every countryman in our nation, I would have thanked everyone that is a citizen of our country. (laughs) And if I could line up every citizen of the U.S., if I could line them up side by side, hand in hand, (laughs) that would take a lot of time. (laughs) Okay, so let's talk about our friend, we'll call him Paul. Mm, And you've met met him. and uh, Maybe I met him. One of our comedy guys adores him. And I always tell him this guy is full of crap. I mention sometimes to my bar host's friend, Things that he says, like uh, my boy has friend, she has asthma, she has a terrible time when their period comes. She has premenstrual cramps and postmenstrual oh, cramps. Oh, dear. And menstrual cramps. Mm. So for her, a period is like three and a half weeks, three weeks, every month. So That's horrible. Yeah, hard, for, amazing. For horrible. So I don't know, for some reason, Paul, you know, in a university lounge, what do you talk about? Periods, of course you do. <laughs> Bunch of guys, especially when, when there's no women around. That's when you talk, yeah. start talking about that kind of stuff. Well, oh, I said she's sick. She's premenstrual. And he goes, "No, but a period only lasts two, three days." <laughs> they said, "Well, she says differently. She's screaming in agony, and she disagrees with you." It's like, well, yeah, but that's not what I heard. And I said, "Remember when you had your period?" Paul? 
He goes, well, I don't have parents. I said, I think that's my point. Right? <laughs> and he was arguing with me. Um, he goes, the speechwriters shouldn't do this. And they shouldn't do that. And I said, actually, I was a speechwriter. And you write the speech that your lawmaker tells you to do. He's your client. Mm -hmm. He goes, well, actually, speechwriters don't write the speeches. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Okay, so who writes the speeches, Paul? Lawyers. Lawyers. <laughs> they write the speeches. So I said, no. He said, oh, it's either lawyers or lawmakers. I said, Law <laughs> lawmakers make the laws. That's why we gave them a handy, easy-to-remember name, lawmaker. <laughs> and speechwriters write the speeches. That's where they're called speechwriters. He goes, yeah. yeah, well, I've never heard of, like, a, a non-lawyer writing speeches. And I said... Remember in 1989 when you and I were working on that speech for Mario Cuomo? And he goes, well, I was never in New York. And I said, that's my point. <laughs> Shut the hell up. Remember when you weren't there? Are you familiar with Dunning-Kruger syndrome? Mm -hmm. so there's two guys like that. Paul, I call him Dunning. And mm -hmm. there's a bald guy who's like that, and I call him Kruger. <laughs> and they don't know what I'm talking about. But Dunning-Kruger syndrome <laughs> says that the proportion, how much you don't know determines how much you think you know about a subject. Mm-hmm. So if you think you know the Chinese language and you actually know 3%, you probably think you're lacking 10% of knowledge. Right, right. But you're lacking 97%. Mm -hmm. But to you, since you don't even know how much you don't know, mm -hmm. you don't know what you don't know, you don't know how much you don't know, and that's not in Kruger, you underestimate how ignorant mm -hmm. you are of mm -hmm. a subject. Why? Because you're ignorant. Mm -hmm. The more you learn, the more you realize how much more you have to learn. Mm -hmm. So I have arguments with him all the time. And one of the guys in our circle kind of defends him and goes, yeah, but he has a master's degree. <laughs> <laughs> and I always say... He has a master's degree. For the yeah, third time, nice. for the third time, I'm not a guy that walks around bragging about my qualifications. But don't make me say this again. I have two master's degrees. Mm -hmm. I have a BA in journalism. I have a master's in statistics mm -hmm. and a master's in linguistics. Mm -hmm. So by that measure, and which by the way, doesn't mean deadly. Mm-hmm doesn't mean you know anything. But if that's your criteria, then you should trust what I say 200% more. Right. I have twice as many masters. Right. New and improve. <laughs> Double the masters. <laughs> but this guy is tall, and so you have these guys who are tall, and they're insecure about their lack of qualifications, so they talk, 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 mm -hmm. talk all the time about how much they know. How much they know about periods, which is nothing. <laughs> How much do you know about speech writing, which is nothing? You know, I said to Paul, I said uh, several times, I said, you know, you can spout all the BS you want about engineering. I don't know anything about it. I wouldn't be arguing with you about it. But when you said that it's really, really hard to learn to code, to program computers, it's actually not hard. I passed, just for the hell of it, I passed C, mm -hmm. C+, plus, C++, plus plus, Java. I don't like and it. And you're saying you got an A plus on C+. <laughs> Or did you get a C plus I got an A plus on C plus <laughs> and an A plus on C plus plus and I was and then I tell people and they're non plus yeah, uh, yeah yeah I learned it and I don't like it I learned how to do it and mm. I learned that it's very tedious it's mm -hmm. like counting sand I don't it like is. it and but it's not hard it's tedious right but you have this thing that tests your work it's called a compiler mm -hmm, you put mm -hmm. that in the compiler will take you all day it's just a robot it's just a logic system. If it finds a misplaced... Oh, there was no semicolon here. Yeah. Misplaced apostrophe. Yeah. You know, in English communication, we could say, you know what I meant. Yes. I know what you meant. I know. You, you skipped an But and. computers are stupid, yeah. so... And they make you do it again, mm -hmm. and, and that's... It's so tedious. It doesn't take intelligence. It takes persistence. And meticulousness. Uh, you can almost argue it takes dumb, meticulous people mm. that won't give up. No disparagement. Oh, we're on in India? No. Programmers are brilliant. <laughs> Thank you, India. No Thank disparagement you. of people with Asperger's. Thank you, sarcasm. Mm. So that's our friend Paul, who's never come to our show. Well, then we can say whatever we want about him, right? Yeah, because he's too busy having a master's degree. That's, that's right. a full-time job, apparently. <laughs> well, you already got it, right? Yeah, but that's his job. <clears throat> well, if we ever make it big, you can have some consolation. All these people are going to show up and pretend that they knew us when we were nobodies. <laughs> And they can say, I, and then they loved us when we were nobodies. They can say, I, I knew Timmy when he was short. <laughs> Mark Bailey, Mike Miller, talk funny. <laughs>